The Lord be with you. Well, a warm welcome this morning to St Paul's Church in Oadby and to our online service. A special welcome if you're new or visiting. It's great to have you here with us. Whatever your background or life story, we believe that you are precious to God and we long to get to know you better. So if you're watching this uh, as it premieres, then do interact with us through the live chat. Say hello to us, tell us where you're watching from, tell us what you've had for breakfast this morning, and say hello. We hope you feel very welcome to our service this morning. St Paul's is a Church of England church, part of the Diocese of Leicester, um, and our vision as a church is to be a church for people of all ages, backgrounds, cultures, and nationalities growing together as we follow Jesus. As you join us this week, you join us for what would have been an all-age service uh, where we would meet together as the family of God in this place, from the youngest to the oldest. And this week, we would be having our harvest celebrations. Through the last few weeks, we have marked the season of creation time. And as we have journeyed through that time together, we have been thinking about how we play our part in caring for God's creation, the good earth that he has made and created and given to us to steward, to care for, and to pass on to future generations. And so today we come with thanksgiving for the harvest that we have received, for those who work the land to produce the food that we enjoy, the bountiful provision that God gives to each one of us. In our Bible reading today, we're going to hear a story about a farmer who was so successful with his crops that he tore down his barns to build bigger barns. And so a question through this morning's service for each one of us watching is to think about, well, what are we building? And so at this harvest time, we want to start by building a time of praise and thanksgiving to God for all the good things that he has given to us. So I'm going to say two prayers, one from my children's prayer book that we often say together as a family at harvest time, and then the collect for harvest. So let us pray. The harvests have ripened in the sun. There's plenty of food for everyone. There's some for ourselves and more to share with all of God's people everywhere. Amen. And creator God, you made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea and the rhythms of the season. As we bless you for all that you have created, may we cherish and respect this planet and its people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen part of building a time of praise and thanksgiving is to sing our songs of praise to God. We may all be familiar with the song, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. Well, this is a twist on that song, which I really like, that makes us think. It's actually called, He's Put the Whole World in Our Hands. So let's sing along together as John and Maria lead us. Put the fish and the insects in our hands. 
hands he's put all his creatures in our hands he's put the whole world in our hands he's put the hills and the valleys in our hands he's put the seas and the oceans in our hands he's put the air that we breathe in our hands he's put the whole world in our hands he's put the trees and the flowers in our hands he's put the fields and the in our hands is put the future of the planet. In our hands is put the whole world. In our hands is put the people of the world. In our hands is put the poor and the homeless. In our hands is put the sick and the suffering. In our hands is put the whole world. In our hands is put the whole world. In our hands is put the whole. After building a time of praise and thanksgiving, what are we building now? We're building a time of confession, where we recognize that although God's put the whole world in our hands, we have not cared for it as we should. So let us confess our forgetfulness of the needs of the poor and repent of the ways in which we waste the resources of the world. Lord, you give us this good earth, yet we take your generous gifts for granted. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you give us this good earth, but we squander its rich resources. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you give us this good earth, but we fail to share your bounty with all of your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins. Open your eyes to God's truth and strengthen you to do God's will and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So as forgiven sinners, what are you building? We're now building a time of listening and learning together. And Samuel has our Bible reading for today. The reading is taken from Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 30. And he told them this parable. The grounds of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn. Yet God feeds them, and how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? 
since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of those. If that is how God clothed the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. So dear God, we thank you that your presence, that your love, that your word is with us, living and active, shaping our lives. So we pray that you might be using that living word to speak into our situations, into our lives today, wherever we are, whoever we are, wherever we're at. Amen. So Jesus starts with a story. And in the first few words, we realise that actually he's talking about a very successful man, a very rich man, um, someone who has really done well for himself. Um, He's actually grown so much as a farmer that he can't even store it all away. And so he says, I'm just going to have to build bigger barns. I mean, that's what success looks like, isn't it? That's what we would call it. We'd say, you know, God is really blessing you, how well you're doing. You know, we might label that as really wise and really talented in what he's doing. But what did Jesus say? Jesus says he's lost the plot. Now, let me tell you about worry. And we're like, hold on, Jesus. Like, how is this man worried? Surely this is a story about greed. Or maybe even about generosity. How can we give when we've got so much? Or maybe even one of those nice little farm stories that you tend to tell about sharing the good news and um, sharing our faith with others and how that grows or doesn't grow. Like, isn't this usually the direction that you go in? This guy doesn't seem to have any worries at all. I mean, life's going great for him. But it's funny that when Jesus tries to teach his disciples about worry, He doesn't talk about a man who is worried, but a man who is rich. And when Jesus tells a story and then he he turns to the people he's talking to and he starts to explain it, he's basically saying, where do you find yourself in this story? Who are you in this story? Where can you recognise some of the behaviour or some of the results? So what is Jesus' advice? He basically says, um, you've got this successful farm, you've got this secure, um, safe place, this piece of land you know and you own. Um, Jesus says, well, you need to get out more. You need to get off the land. You need to get out of being surrounded by your own success and your need for more and go and look at the birds of the air. To go and look at the flowers of the fields and be reminded that God is at work, that God is out there caring and growing when you've got so focused on your own success and what you're doing and what you're achieving and how successful you are, you're missing God at work. So I wanted to understand this picture um, that Jesus is painting right here with this story. And so a lot of you might not know this, but when I was eight years old, I wanted to be an architect. I wanted to design houses and buildings and spaces and about to share some of those skills that I had at eight years old with you this morning. So I've drawn a sort of bird's eye view version of this story, which I'll show you here. Um, So what we have, we have the little house. There's even a little door, Um, you know. I know what I'm talking about. I forgot to put doors on the barns. That's really bad, isn't it? There's two barns up here at the top where he's storing all the stuff that he's growing. And then there's this massive growing space because clearly he's growing a lot of stuff. So Jesus talks about how, how well this guy seems to be doing and that he's grown too much and that he decides to do uh, to build bigger barns. So let's make that happen in this picture. And... Um, and adjust what that might look like. So what is the result 
um, of this man's choices. He's not really um, chosen to share what he has. He's not really thought, well, I've got so much. What I'll do is I'll go and share it with other people. I'll go and share it with people who don't have as much or maybe whose plants aren't currently growing really well or their plants aren't in season. You know, maybe I'll go and share it with other people. He doesn't really think, you know, maybe there's actually more I can be doing with my um, space. He's just kind of caught up in his own achievements. He's feeling probably really smug with himself, really happy with um, what he's achieved. But what is the cost when it comes to growing so much that you feel that you've got to build bigger barns and store it away? And what might the cost of that be? Well, the cost of that in our picture is growing space. To build bigger storage, he has to reduce his capacity to grow. So maybe is there a connection between how we store up our achievements and our successes and our security and our own certainty and losing our capacity to grow, forgetting how to give, forgetting how to be generous, forgetting maybe how to be grateful, forgetting that actually the world is the Lord's and everything in it. And most importantly, as Jesus points out, forgetting that the earth is big, it is God's own space, and that wherever we are, whoever we are, God is at work. And so if we insert what is happening right now in our world and in our time into Jesus' story in Luke 12, it's almost like a massive tornado has come in and it has wrecked all of our barns, it has torn everything up. And considering Jesus' approach in his story in Luke 12, I don't think Jesus' response would be rebuild the barns as they were or even bigger than they were before, just in case we get another disaster. I imagine Jesus might say, use the increased growing space where you can learn from the birds, where you can learn from the flowers and the plants, where you can grow new things you never had space for before where you can grow variety, where you could never plant all these different things at the same time. Use this opportunity. And don't just do this until barns for you turn up with a new flat pack barn and then chuck all of that learning out of the window. Learn this for the long time. What could, be, what could you be growing? How could you be using this increased growing space? What do you really need to store? And how can you look at what you can pass on to the next generation, not just what can I store up for myself? At the end of the summer, there was um, a youth work conference called um, Now What, which um, I connected with um, just before I came back from my sabbatical. And one of the um, speakers um, said something really profound about youth work. But I think it's really a good message for all of us in church, as family, as community together. And she said this, our bricks have turned to sand in terms of the things we have built. So what does it look like to do ministry through sandcastles instead of buildings? Our bricks have turned to sand in terms of the things we have built. So what does it look like to do ministry through sandcastles instead of buildings? What does it look like not to build more barns, to store more things up for the long haul, but how can we use this cleared, expansive space to build new sandcastles that maybe aren't made for the next hundred years, but are made to serve this God moment that we have in front of us? And not worrying whether it lasts for a moment or for a season, but actually, how do we get off our land and find God at work in the open spaces, being released from the need to build bigger barns? We might not all be capable of building a house or a barn, but we can all build a sandcastle. I was reminded of this when I went on holiday. I don't think I built a sandcastle for about 15 years, but I still got it and I was quite proud. Whoever we are, wherever we are, we can build sandcastles. So what might our sandcastles be? How might we bring God's love and God's hope out of the barn and into the wide open spaces for all to see? And even as the waves and the tides come in and they might wash away what we have built yesterday, hopefully like those amazing people who sculpt those incredible things on the beach that make our sandcastles maybe look not so great, 
but they inspire us to go and build more, to go and build our sandcastles and have a go. Maybe in the building of our sandcastles, we might encourage others to build sandcastles where they are, sandcastles of hope and love and good news, to actually share wherever we go, for however long they may last, that God brings love and hope and good news to the world around us here and now. Where might our growing spaces be? Amen. Thank you, Lou, for that inspiring sermon. I should have bought my bucket and spade. What we should be building are sandcastles. What are you building? We're going to build on our time of praise now as we sing another song. And Maria and John are going to lead us in our next song, Songs in the Night. God, you can tell the waves be still, tell the ocean roar to pass, Lord, until it does. Whatever may come, 
What are you building? Where I'm now building a time of prayer as we come before God and thank him for the harvest and pray for the needs of the world. And Sarah is leading our prayers this week. Let us be still and offer our prayers to God for the life of the world. God, you are the beginning and the end of all things. You watch over us and care for all your creation. Generous God, at this time of harvest, we thank you for all the good things that you give us. We remember those who do not have enough. Lord, bless all those who suffer because of war, climate change and the current pandemic. We pray for the work of our local charities and food bank. Help us to share the harvests of the world more fairly, so everyone can be fed. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this harvest time, we thank you for the hard work of all those who grow, protect and prepare our food. For the shopkeepers, the delivery drivers, the processors and the farmers. Bless all those, Lord, who do not earn a fair day's pay for their work, both in the UK and abroad. Help us to buy local produce and fairly traded goods wherever we can. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this time of harvest, we pray for governments and aid agencies and those areas of the world where there is disaster, drought and starvation. By the grace of your Spirit, touch our hearts and the hearts of all those who live comfortably, and make us wise stewards of your gifts. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this time of harvest, we thank you for your creation around us, for the flowers, trees and animals. Help us to protect your creation by being careful about how we use your resources, so that there will be clean water, clean air, and lots of birds and animals. We are aware of so much that we get wrong, so we give thanks too for your grace and patience with us when we don't look after your world as we should. Help us to change so that we too become a new creation, walking in the light of Jesus. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this time of harvest, we ask for your blessing on our families, friends and neighbours, and on those who are sick. Be with those in our community who are in special need at this time. We pray for those who have recently died and who have been gathered into your presence, those whose work here is done. Comfort their relatives and be with them at this difficult time. Help us to recognise the interdependence of all life and the importance of just relationships and community. 
help us to become good stewards of all you continue to give us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we're going to join all our prayers together now as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Please do pray in your own native language, as Emmanuel leads us, praying in Yoruba. Baba wati mbelor, ki abo wafun urukore, ki joba redi, ife tireni kashe laye, bi wanti inche lor, fun walo njo jo walo ni, dari eshe wajiwa, bi ati ndari eshe jia wanto shewa, mafa wasi nu idewo, shubamba walo wabilisi, ni turi joba ni tire, agbara ni tire, ogo ni tire, lai lai, Amen. What are you building? Well, I'm building a big collection of food in front of me. I hope you've noticed through the service that I've gradually been adding harvest gifts to the table here. I'm building a time of sharing. And first of all, I want to say thank you to those who bought food to donate to OB Food Bank. Uh, this is just some that's landed at my house during the week, but other people have been collection points. There's also a collection point at the co-op in Oadby, or you can take it directly yourself to Trinity Methodist Church, where the food bank operates from, on a Wednesday afternoon between 2 and 4, before the food bank on a Friday. And I want to encourage all of us, if we can, to give generously to the work of Oadby Food Bank, because demand is as high as it's ever been. Uh, and in these times that we find ourselves. Thinking further ahead, but again cultivating the building of sharing and blessing others in our community. At Christmas, we have a gift service where we buy gifts and give them to those who live in local care homes and refuges. And Jill and Vivian are organizing that again this year, just in a slightly different way. If you are willing to buy a gift, to give a young person in one of those homes, please, please, please let Jill or Vivian know in the next week so that we know what commitments we are able to fulfill over this Christmas. And they will then explain to you what needs to happen in terms of buying a gift and they'll come and collect them from you and make sure they're distributed in time. But please let them know this week. We have good gifts to share with others. We also have good news to share with others. And Maria has a brief notice now. Good morning, St Paul's. Lovely to be with you this morning. Over the last few months, I've noticed that a lot of my uh, conversations and communications have moved from being primarily kind of meeting-based, face-to-face with people, to more now increasingly taking place online. And I'm sure I'm not alone in this. We've had to work around restrictions on physical meetings. So things like emails and WhatsApp group and social media I think has become a more useful tool for us to stay in touch with friends and family. So it feels that this is a good time to think a little bit about how we can share our faith in, in this time and in the way that we are meeting people at the moment. Hopefully to help us to do this, St Paul's is going to produce a short series of videos where we're looking to cover some of the topics people might have thought about during the time of lockdown. Things like how prayer and scripture has helped us and sustained us during this time. How our faith um, relates to issues such as environment and justice. Or how our faith has helped us to stay hopeful during this time. We're going to record um, short videos and we're looking for people in St Paul's to share some reflections and thoughts around those topics. If you would like to be involved in those, please send me an email or give me a call. Filming will take place on the 15th of October, uh, but there is some flexibility around that. So if you feel called to, to get involved with this, please get in touch. But even if you don't, please hold us in, our, uh, in your prayers as we are in last stages of planning and preparing for these videos. 
that they will be um, that they will just kind of all come together in a good way but also that they will be a real tool that facilitates us to speak well of our faith and proclaim the gospel uh, in this time and place that we're in at this moment and in a final spirit of sharing the one thing that we mustn't forget in our all age service is our birthday spot because we like to share with those who are celebrating their birthday. So if your birthday falls in October, then you need to get onto the live chat now and just put your name in there, tell us when your birthday is and what you've done to celebrate. If it's your birthday, we want to know and to share and celebrate with you. So Maria and others who've got a birthday in this month, it's time to put your name in now. And if you've got one of those birthdays that ends in a big number, we really want to know, Rich. So do let us know in the chat. And we wish you all a very happy birthday. And at St Paul's, we have a way of doing that. We would normally share some chocolate with you, um, but we also sing our special version of the birthday song. Happy birthday. We've been thinking about what we're building through this service and Luz helpfully helped us to think about that with her excellent sermon. But the last thing I want us to think about what are we building is what pledge are we personally going to make as we've journeyed through this season of creation tide and given thanks at harvest today. What are we going to do to make a practical difference? If you've not seen it yet, I really want to encourage you to watch David Attenborough's latest documentary, A Life on Our Planet. Angie and I watched it on Monday and found it an excellent watch, his witness statement to the world. It, at times it's quite sobering when he talks about how the world has changed in his lifetime and the things that he has seen happen. But actually in it, he offers us a message of hope a positive way forward, five different things that we can all do. And if we all do together, we can play our part and we can make a difference to this world, to this planet that God has entrusted to us as his stewards. One story that I want to share with you personally through a lockdown, I decided in June to take on the challenge of trying to be vegan for a month, to cut down on the meat and dairy produce that I was eating. I rather strangely signed up to Vijanuary, um, which normally operates in January every year, but still worked in June. And I actually found it really inspiring. I thought it was a well presented and gave me some great recipes. I enjoyed experimenting, having a bit more time to cook, making more things and more fresh things. And I've actually aimed, not always been perfect, but aimed to stick to a vegan diet since June. Now, I'm not here necessarily to convert you to join me in a new diet, but I do want us to think about a promise or a pledge that we can make to live more lightly, to care more for creation, to play our part, to do our bit. So join me in caring for creation, the creation that God has entrusted to us. Thank you so much for joining us for our harvest celebrations. If you want to know more about St. Paul's Church in Oadby or the Christian faith, then please be in touch with me. My email address should appear on the screen. We are gathering as a church family on Zoom at 11 o'clock to share with one another, to encourage and pray for one another. So I look forward to seeing you there. But as our service draws to a close, a final prayer of blessing. May God, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the sky, who leads lambs to pasture and deer to water, who multiplied loaves and fishes, who changed water into wine, lead us, feed us, multiply us and change us to reflect the glory of our Creator through all eternity. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Join us again next week. Are we ready? Okay.